Good evening. Welcome to Bits and Pieces. Well, the election is over and now it's on to bonfire night. This is when all the old prams come out and the youngest member of the family gets dressed up as Guy Fawkes. So get your pennies ready. Talking about pennies, Mike the policeman, whom we all know, asked us to remind you no two pence is needed for an emergency. Wishing a happy 25th wedding anniversary to Dot Bacon, who works in Woodford's shop, Fairwood Broadway. She was presented with a miniature pair of silver riding boots from her workmates. And as any excuse goes for a good old booze up, there was plenty of bleary eyes at Woodford's last Wednesday. From a drop of the hard stuff, we went on Friday morning to the caking cup at Holy Cross Church. Cake and Cup of Morning from 9 to 11 is now being held every Friday morning in the church hall. It offers you a couple of hours of friendly chat where the children are free to run and play. A group of local ladies organises the canteen and work on a rotor system. There is also the added attraction of a very good jumbo cell incorporated with the Cake and Cup of. Last weekend was the open day at Rolls-Royce and this report was written by Stan Keaton who works at Rolls-Royce. One of Bristol's heritages is aircraft and aero engines. The public were able to walk around some of the large workshops that produce component parts from the foundries to the machine shops, onto the fitting shops, then finally to completed engines like Pegasus for the Harrier and the Olympus 593 that powers the Concorde. The test beds were also open to the public, an area of intrigue where engines are really put through their paces. A flying programme followed with aircraft like Britannia's Harrier and Concorde, plus, other in plus others including the famous Red Arrows. On display in the historic aircraft side was aircraft like the Spitfire, Gladiator and Hurricane, just to mention a few that will bring back memories of Bristol's skills of the past and present. And still at Holy Cross for our what's on, there is a playgroup available Monday and Wednesday afternoons from 1.30 to 3.30. The children's ages 2 to 5 and they must be potty trained and the charge is 20 pence, but that's with milk and biscuits, and there is still vacancies. It seems even though there are plenty of facilities available for the children of our estate, the parents don't seem to take advantage of them. We're pleased to say that work has started again on the 32 old people's flats in Creswick Road. Building stopped there about three months ago when the firm of contractors went bankrupt. The site is now to be completed from, by direct labour from the Bristol Corporation. Right next door is the new sports pavilion and this is also near completion and should be handed over to the education as it stands within the next couple of weeks. The contractors told us it has been very uphill work from the word go, due once again to the vandalism. And the feeling amongst the, build, the builders concerned is that the community should take a much more active part after hours in protecting what is really the community's property. In other words, don't look the other way. Mr Ted Marsh of 58 Daventry Road and caretaker of Christ the King School Fillwood Broadway retired last week after 21 years service at the school. The school staff gathered together on Friday afternoon and presented Ted with a Bristol glass decanter and a pair of cufflinks. The presentation was made by Mr Byrne, headmaster at Christ the King. And afterwards, the whole school assembled in the hall for their own presenta presentation to their well-loved caretaker. Mr Marsh entered the hall amid loud cheers and applause from the children and they presented him with a picnic hamper and to Mrs Marsh they gave a bouquet of chrysanthemums. Ted's comment was, I have enjoyed every minute of my 21 years here 
working among happy and friendly staff, children and parents. And congratulations to Olive and Barry Glover on the arrival of their son, Martin Barry, who was born on October the 3rd, weighing in at seven pounds, nine ounces. Barry is a church army captain attached to St Barnabas Church and does a lot of work in the Norwest area. And until recently, Olive was a teacher at Eastfield Junior School. Both parents are delighted with their new baby. They have received lots of cards and presents from people living on the estate, for which they are very grateful. And Barry is overwhelmed by people stopping him in the street to congratulate him. And as you were for all the football fans watching, how many of you recognise this face? It's Bobby Williams, nicknamed Shadow Williams, now aged 34. As a young lad, he lived in Wellgarth Walk, No, and from school some 18 years ago, he joined Bristol City 18. At 18, he turned professional and played for City for eight years, making over 200 appearances and 80-odd goals. Transferred to Rotherham for £12,000 seven years ago and played two years in second division. Came back to play for Bristol Rovers two years with no play in the first team, then free transfer to Reading, where he enjoyed playing for about two years. His football career then took him to the continent where he played for Belgium. Next stop, Weymouth and Yeovil. Then, his footballing days ended quickly and tragically. Travelling back to Reading in his car, Shadow crashed into a wall, not remembering anything that happened. His injuries were many, fractured pelvis, both legs damaged and facial cuts. A couple of months in hospitals where the doctor said he survived only because he was fit. Shadow Williams, looking at it sensibly, realised his footballing days were over. He is now a travelling salesman. His dream now is for someone to offer him a job in football. He holds a coaching badge. And anyone who has ever met Bobby Williams will wish him all the luck in the world. The Salvation Army at Padstow Road held their annual Harvest Festival on Sunday, October the 6th. All the food donated was sold at an informal sale and the £12 raised was sent to London headquarters for distribution. There was also a Harvest Supper on Monday, October the 7th and 60 people of all ages attended. And some of the activities at the Salvation Army, if anyone would like to go, on Monday, Wednesday and Friday from 9 until 12 a.m. there's a children's playgroup with some vacancies if anyone would like to take their children along. And on Monday there's the Over 60s Club at 6.45 and Tuesday afternoon there's Women's Fellowship at 2 o'clock and Wednesday afternoon <coughs> there's the Wives Club also at 2 o'clock. And the K4 Boys Club have now moved from Maxi Road into their new premises at the Square, Knoll Park. Membership has increased considerably, especially in the 11 to 14 age group. There is a strong core of senior members over 14 years. However, the senior club is slow in attracting new members. So if you are over 14 years old, why don't you give it a try? The club is open on Monday evening from 7 till 10 p.m., Wednesday 6.30 until 8 for juniors and 8.30 until 10 for seniors. And on Friday it's open for juniors and seniors, but the juniors have to leave at 9 o'clock. And some of the club activities include an uh, under 13s football and under 15s football, snooker, table tennis, darts, chess and drafts and there's also a canteen <coughs> where you can get tea, coffee and snacks. At the last community council meeting, John Warden, who is the vicar of Holy Cross Church, was voted chairman and here are his views. I am pleased to accept the position of chairman of the Norwest Community Council at this time. It is true to say that there has never been so much activity happening in our area 
and this is most beneficial to a community spirit. My task as chairman is simply to be a man in the middle, a non-partisan person who does not direct the, dar the traffic of activity. Each organisation will and must do its own thing, but to ask and seek cooperation for the whole community. Uh, well, today is also Enid's husband's birthday, Derek, and I don't know what aftershave he wears, but all the cards he's received have been on one subject. And it's not from me either. Not from me, no. no. it's not from we me. We can't find out whose telephone number this is. <laughs> and I'm trying to phone up and find out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's all for tonight. Good, Good night. night. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what you're doing.